What frustrates a lot of people is how long it takes to balance the gimbal. So I'm going to break it down for you for dummy style using the Weibo 3S, the Sony a7 IV, and the 35mm f1.4 G Master lens. But first, let's start with a few notes. Ensure your battery and memory card are inside the camera and the lens cap is removed because we don't want the balance thrown off. Also, this guide is going to have the quick release plate, camera backing base, and lens support already installed because that's not where people struggle during the setup. The Weibo 3S has a lock switch at all three axes. Let's start with the tilt axis unlocked and keep the pan and roll axis locked until further notice. Now, because I believe in showing and telling, this is what the Sony a7 IV looks like when completely balanced on the tilt axis, horizontally and vertically. Notice that it doesn't fall forward or backward when I position it horizontally, and when I position it vertically, it also doesn't fall backward or forward. And lastly, no matter where I position the camera, it stays in place. Now, we must have the tilt axis unlocked before we balance the Sony a7 IV. Do this with the tilt axis lock switch. We must also unlock the quick release plate latch to move the camera forward or backward. To make balancing your camera easier on yourself, make micro adjustments instead of significant sliding adjustments when pushing the camera forward or backward. That will prevent you from overcorrecting and save you some time. Now, here's an important tip. When balancing on the tilt axis, observe the camera from the side profile to ensure the lens looks horizontally level because if you bounce the camera from behind, you don't get a full view of the lens because the camera body blocks it. As a result, you may think you bounce the camera horizontally, but then discover the lens is leaning forward from the side profile point of view. So again, your best bet is to bounce the camera from the side view instead of behind the camera. Now, after finding the balance position, notice how I push the quick release plate latch into the lock position. When balancing vertically on the tilt axis, use the level mount lock screw to loosen and tighten things. Make sure the camera is facing up and, where necessary, push this level mount forward or backward to correct the direction in which the camera is falling. Again, focus on making micro adjustments. So, if the camera looks almost balanced but not quite there yet, know that you need to make tiny adjustments in the opposite direction. Once I found that perfectly balanced spot, notice how I tightened the level mount lock screw. Again, the fun goal is for the camera to stay still with the lens facing up vertically. Some of you have foregone this balancing step and later realized vortex mode doesn't work well for you. Hopefully, I'm giving you the confidence in this video to get this and everything else right. Now, once again, let's show and tell. When the camera is balanced on the roll axis, this is what it should look like. Notice how it stays still no matter what position I put the camera in. When I tilt it right, it stays in that position. When I tilt it left, it stays in that position as well. Even when I lean the entire gimbal system forward, the camera stays still in the same position. That's a true mark of determining whether the camera is balanced or not. Let's go over how to achieve this type of balancing. When balancing the roll axis, make sure the roll axis is unlocked. I like to lock the tilt axis because I already balanced it so I know it's good and I want to have it in a locked position when balancing the roll axis. For the roll axis, we're going to unlock the quick release plate leveling base latch. That's a mouthful and I hate that they named it that. This will allow us to slide the camera left and right to find the right balance. Again, use micro adjustments instead of significant sliding adjustments when pushing the camera left or right. Keep making adjustments until the camera stays horizontally level to the ground. This means you should ensure the camera is not leaning left or right. If balanced correctly, it should look exactly like I described in the previous section. Now, give yourself a pat on the back and let's tighten this latch up and move on to the pan axis. When the camera is balanced on the pan axis, this is what it should look like. Notice how when I push the gimbal system forward, the camera stays still. It doesn't swing to the left or to the right. And notice how I can put the camera in different positions and it will stay there. Even if I pick the Weeble up, position it horizontally against my stomach and move the camera in different directions, notice how the camera stays still and doesn't move. This is how you know the camera is balanced well on the pan axis. When balancing the pan axis, make sure the pan axis is unlocked and go ahead and lock the tilt and roll axis. Then make sure to loosen the pan axis latch. Realize that we're sliding this axis in and out until we find the right balance. I like to make micro adjustments by leaning the gimbal system forward until I find the spot where it stops swinging wildly. In my opinion, the pan axis is the most sensitive axis to balance because 
It only takes the smallest adjustments to either get the balance right or wrong. So I can totally see how someone would get pissed off and give up on the pan axis and think you can operate the gimbal without it. Don't be that guy or girl. Hey, Editor Watts here. Enjoy this extended look at what balance looks like on the pan axis. If you like to read instructions instead of watching a video, I got you. Check out my blog post that instructs you on how to balance a camera using the Weeble 3S. And if you're looking for safe places to buy the gimbal, check out the links in the description.